Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to the latest uh, edition of the Master Chess Web Show. Nigel has kindly allowed me to introduce the show this morning. Again, wherever you are in the world, whatever part of the day you are experiencing. And um, today's show is quite an interesting one because it, it features um, a training idea, which I know Nigel and I have both put into practice um, for busy players. And busy players these days really can, um, can run through the whole age group in chess, from people who have a job, a family, to, to school kids who have homework, who have um, uh, all sorts of interests in their lives, but at the, and at the same time want to be better at chess. I mean, I see this, you know, from day to day in the UK. I don't know about you, Nigel. You know, busy people all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone's very busy. From from it's... primary school kids to to teenagers, through to uh, youths and, and and through to adults. So, mm -hmm. one of the main ideas that uh, we're putting forward in this show is that to save yourself some time. What you could do if you want to form a good opening repertoire is to aim for positions which reach similar or the same pawn structures uh, right from the outset. And if you learn how to play these pawn structures properly, then, um, you know, actually you've got um, quite a successful opening repertoire at your disposal. You know, leave the, uh, leave the thought that you can play every single opening to the grandmasters because they have the time, the energy and the computing power to actually um, be able to do this. But for the average citizen these days, you know, you run the risk of being out prepared, out thought by people who've got more time than you. And by learning a whole set of positions based around a certain pawn structure, well, you can successfully counter this. I don't know what you think about that, Nigel. Well, uh, absolutely. I, I, um, I base most of my teaching material on this, uh, this concept. Um, I, I would actually say that, that one of the, the reasons for a high dropout rate amongst teenagers is that their, their chess can be too difficult to maintain. And, um, you know, so if they, they play very sharp openings and they, they, you know, maybe when they're 10, 11, 12, they've got time to study. Uh, but later on, then they, they won't be able to keep up to date. But if they, if they have a, a lower maintenance um, uh, way of playing chess, then there's no reason for them to stop when they get hit by, uh, you know, concerns over exams, career, and, and so forth and so on. So I absolutely agree with you. And I, I think it's just madness to have uh, openings where um, you're, you're very dependent on preparation, um, unless you're a, you know, a full-time 2700er. You know, so uh, on that note, I will I will share the screen. Hopefully share the right one. Doesn't always happen. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I've got the right one. <laughs> there we go. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that brings us to our um, first game. Now, um, I know that. Uh, I know that Nigel has been been recommending systems for black with e6 haven't you yeah, yeah. The queen's gambit declined and the french uh on this uh show i'm going to concentrate on lines with with c6 an early c6 and um one of the cores of the repertoire against d4 let's say is the slav setup with c6 and of course, this is a very solid and reliable way to play isn't it nigel you can play it against absolutely everything oh yeah yeah I mean, I think one of the the the, uh, the things that put some people off is the exchange slav, but usually there's ways to to unbalance the game there. Um, it's quite interesting that Gary Kasparov later in his career um, he he started to switch away from the um, the King's Indian and was playing uh, the slav and the, the I think the Queen's Gambit accepted instead, and um, I mean part of the reason might be that he was um he wasn't doing as well with the king's indian as as he used to in his you know in the 1980s but i i think also it probably became very high maintenance to play the nidorf and the king's indian and sharp openings with white you know it's just it was just too much well of course what we're going to see here is a kasparov game uh yeah. kasparov is black against sakaev 
and I think this game was played in St. Petersburg in 2003. So, of course, after the, the match against Kramnik in, in 2000. And um, here we see Kasparov adopting the Slav. Now, I mean, I think, I think people are, um, we just play, these moves weren't played in the game, but I think people are perhaps apprehensive, as Nigel said, about facing the exchange variation. But uh, there's no need for Black to mechanically copy moves here. I mean, I think A6 has been quite successful for Black yeah, in recent yeah. times, hasn't it? Yeah. And it, it? If White plays E3, you just get a very solid position after something like Bishop G4. Yeah, and and also knight h five. Uh, this is uh, quite a, a a dynamic move as well. Well, Vinnick played that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And you know that that's another way to try and unbalance the game a bit. Um, and and also if they play the the other flavour of Slav like this, so if they they do c d c d, and now for example bishop f four. Well, we looked at some games in a previous show with this, didn't we? Yes. Black play knight c6 here. And then after e3, um, when well, you can play you, uh, bishop f5 and then f6, wasn't it? You can do something like that, yes. Yeah, bishop f5 and f6. Because this move order, it, um, it discourages black from playing queen b6, which would be one of the answers... Um, um, well, it's not it's not an answer here, but if 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 you go uh, bishop f4, well, let's say we played knight f6. Now knight c3, queen b6 is quite a a, a fighting move, I I believe. You know, I'm I'm taking all my <laughs> my stuff second hand here. I haven't, I haven't actually studied it for myself. Um, you know, but the, the the stuff black can do to you know to to produce a more lively game. Well, I mean, it is worth saying that uh, black can always uh, just, whether white plays knight f3 or not, play a6. I mean, yeah. this is a very respectable way to play and uh, gets good results for black. So, I mean, I would kind of, I would kind of recommend that because it's easy to learn. You can look, play this system against both, uh, both uh, the ideas where white delays knight f3 and when white plays knight f3. Yeah. Anyway, going back to this uh, Kasparov game, uh, we're featuring the main line of the Slav here where white plays uh, knight c3, black plays pawn takes pawn. Now, this is, uh, this is already a sharp move, um, but it's not the type of sharp move where you have to learn reams of theory in order to play it. Um, black gives up the centre for the time being and allows white to play a move like e4 if he wishes, but then, of course, black plays the uncompromising move b5. And um, this variation is basically OK for black, isn't it? <sighs> I believe so, uh, but again, I'm 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 not speaking from personal knowledge. You know, I, I've 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 not <laughs> I've not studied this lately. <laughs> well, um, Sakai has played a four, which is uh, which is not thought to be the best move because it stops b five for the time being, and now Black's got a choice. But uh, in this game, I mean, Black can play Bishop g four. Black can play Knight a six. Black can even play a five here. I've dabbled with that move myself. It's an idea of Yasha Murray. Uh, yeah. who fixes the a fire uh, b4 square and then you can maybe put a knight in on b4 knight a6 to b4 that's quite interesting uh, but anyway kasparov plays bishop f5 uh, and now we get the main line where e3 is played e6 bishop takes pawn and now bishop b4 and really it's um this small center type of position where black's got pawns on e6 and c6 that um that we can focus on um, of course, the great master of playing these positions as black in England is Keith Arkell. He plays them all the time. You need patience, but again, a club level, below master level, you know, patience is not forthcoming uh, too often. And you often find white rushing positions like this. Um, I mean, my, I've played this a few times with black. I've always found it quite comfortable for, for black. I don't know about you. Yeah. Well, I, I've, I've not played the Slav I don't think um, I think maybe I'm, it's one opening I've never actually played well, I find um, that a bit strange because it's it kind of your style you know yeah well probably solid I, I, and dynamic I, at the same time yeah. who knows I, I mean the I, I suppose the concern would be if you've got to win a lot of games with black which uh, you know given, given that I'm not trying to draw with black because nobody's inviting me to category 16 events not anymore <laughs> 
<laughs> then yeah, come in the future. <laughs> yeah, that could come in the future. So I, I would be, you know, wondering, you know, am I going to be able to win games, say, with the, the A6 lines against the exchange? Right, that, that would bother me. Um, because knight h5, well, queen, the queen b6 lines that we looked at in the exchange, those are quite sharp. And again, probably subject to computer preparation. So, you know, I, I, I sort of like a, you know, a bit of an unbalanced middle game where, where both sides have plans and, you know, and you can play, uh, you know, you can, you can play uh, for a win that way, you know. Um, so I don't know. It's never really occurred to me that I should play the Slav. Well, what has Black got to watch out for in this position? Basically, he's got to watch out for two things. Number one, you've always got to watch out for the square B7. When the bishop on C8 leaves home early, B7 pawn becomes a bit tender. So you've got to watch out for that. Although you can cover that quite easily here by, for instance, maybe playing A5, anchoring the bishop on B4. And, uh, you know, it takes white time to get rid of the bishop. Secondly, you've got to watch out for a move like E4. I mean, I think this is the main danger to black, that white will be able to prepare the move E4 and push all the black pieces back. And this is essentially the struggle for this variation. You know, white trying to get this central pawn roller uh, and kingside, possible kingside attack going. And black deflecting that with active pieces. And, you know, black has, black has already made some gains on the queen side because white's played a4, exposing the b4 square. It's just a, an interesting position. Yeah. Anyway, white castled and black continues developing. I mean, black can castle there himself. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and now white plays this move knight h4. I think the main line here is, is queen e2, isn't it? And then uh, black can choose between the immediate bishop g6, which is quite interesting, or black can castle again. Yeah. So um, knight h4. Uh, well, against Kasparov, this is a dangerous course because this is a, this is a sharp line and, and you kind of play into Gary's hands with this. Um, now, again, interestingly, black just plays bishop g6. Um, can I can I remember seeing this move? Is that is that a move here? With the idea of f3, you go knight d5. Is, I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I I don't know very much about this. The <laughs> 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 um, uh, my first source of um, uh, you, you know, the, the, the first thing I wonder about is the difference between knight bd7 and castling short. And I would imagine that uh, if you delay castling short, then you can meet knight h4 with bishop g6 because taking on g6 would open the h file and, and presumably give black some chances of counterplay there. Right, okay, well, let's have a look. So if you, you then, castle... Yeah, then knight h4 may be... Uh, maybe now you have to play bishop g4 because bishop g6 would give up the bishop pair without very much for so it. Queen b3. Yeah. Then a5. Uh, this is the type of thing you've got to watch out for as black as well, that you could suddenly get uh, get tricked like this. But I think I think you'll find that. Uh, Black can extricate himself. That appears to be a new move, knight d5. Is that right? I just thought of it right there and then. Is it complete trash? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it looks very sensible. You're attacking the knight on h4, and uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. You've got, the benefit of, um, you've got the benefit of um, the database in front of you. Uh, I'll just make it up as a go along. <laughs> right, well, it's down here. If there's games, they're, they're down here. Okay, uh, well, I haven't queen got that. B three, apparently queen e seven is the main answer. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Right. So you know that, that's a sensible looking move. Then why queen seven? Depends yeah. queen seven. Well, I think in this position, black will do well. Black has played bishop g six here, but it doesn't do very well because he's castled already. Whereas in this line, uh, bishop g six is actually the main move for black. Oh, right. So. Um, Point being that if a white takes on g6, black recaptures with the h pawn, and then uh, there could be even attacking chances for black against white's king. Yeah, well, we can certainly threaten him with mate. Right. It may not work, but uh, we can we can give it a go. So, um, um, 
but I think I think there's a drawback to uh, tonight BD seven as well. I think there's some line where White can play um, uh, because I I did I, you mean I did back look at, here yeah yeah with um, Queen. Well, I I was always wanted to play it with Queen E two just to keep it simple. Yeah, and then. If black castles now, then white can play e4. Whereas if if white plays queen e2 in this position, well, but is is that true? Uh, queen e2, bishop, queen e2, castles e4. Yeah, and uh, what if I just drop back? You go bishop d3, do you? Bishop d3, yeah. And it's a big... Uh, play some move like that. Is that right? Yeah, and the game continues. You play E5. Yeah. Okay. The game continues, as you say. Yeah. So I, I think there's some, there's, there's some subtleties which I don't understand <laughs> with, <laughs> with either knight BD7 or castles. I mean, I get that knight H4, uh, bishop G6 is, is going to be much better if you've got knight BD7 rather than castles. But I think there's some other stuff going on that, you know, if, if, uh, uh, if we were big experts on the, the Slav, we would probably know about. Well, my, my, my estimation of this type of position is that actually club players, and we're talking about 99% of the chess community here, will not play this position with white very well. Yeah. I, I think it's quite difficult to play this position correctly for white, whether you play knight well, yeah. H4 or not. Yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a really tough nut to crack the Slav. Well, you, you often find you've got hanging pawns in the centre and black can start bombarding those pawns. Yeah. Now, let's go back to the game. White, white played h3, which uh, <laughs> looks a weird type of move, but maybe he's now thinking about taking that bishop on g6. Yeah. Uh, so that h, h2 is no longer a concern. And, and that explains Kasparov's next move, perhaps, bishop h5. He just doesn't want the bishop to be taken. And yeah. uh, I guess he's provoking the move G4, which would, which would probably, let's have a look at this. Is, is that going to run into knight D5 again? I, I would assume knight D5 would be the move, yeah. Oh, there's an exclamation mark appeared from somewhere there. Well, I, I feel honoured. <laughs> well, it wasn't mine. It was <laughs> Not speaking. mine either. So there you go. Uh, this position... Uh, it looks shaky for white to start pushing those kingside pawns. Yeah. Um, but this is, a, this is a strange line. It's got its own laws. Anyway, queen to b3 was played. And the, the difference between castles and knight bd7 is again evident because if black plays queen e7, now knight a2 and b7 will hang. Is that right? Um, yeah. Well, black will have to play a5 in that case, won't it? But then I think we can just take the bishop, can't we? Well, there's no, yeah, and there's no games found. So I, th I think presumably then this position is very attractive for white. And then bishop right. d2 at the end. Even bishop d2. Yeah, a win a pawn, won't it? Even. Yeah. So so queen b3, you you go a5 straight away. Yeah. And then. Um... And if knight a2. Oh, this is the game. If knight, if, yeah, this is the game. So if knight a2, then you play knight d5. Yeah. And now the knight on h4 looks very uh, lonely. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think all of these lines have probably been, you know, very closely investigated. <laughs> by people who like to study this kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we're not, we're, not really, we're not really saying that this is, uh, this is, this may be complicated once you get past a certain level, but at, at the average player's level, it, it's not, oh, yeah, yeah, it's not that complicated. Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, Sakaev now lashes out with G4. That looks an extraordinary move. Yeah, and Kasparov just plays Bishop G6. And he just went back. I mean, I presume after knight d5, he's going to play knight g2. Is that right? Presumably. 
Um, and then if bishop g6, can he go e4 even? Um, yeah, I guess so, because knight takes c3, bc hits the bishop on b4. Well, this is the type of thing white would like to be able to try, this, this massive pawn roller coming down towards black's king, and it's just a question of black whether black can hold white at bay with active pieces. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kasparov dispensed with all this and just played bishop g6. The guy went knight g2 and now black, uh, black castled. Um, yeah, and that seems, to, uh, that seems to hold everything together. Yeah. So knight f4, he's interested in the, um, the bishop again. And now a very instructive move, really, which is typical of these small centre positions. Uh, you've got to find a way to break free. And the only ways to break free really are to play either e5 or c5. Kasparov judges this is the right moment to strike. And I think this really um, is a thematic move and a, and a good move here. And it prompts a mistake, which is, which is interesting. I mean, Sakaev is a strong grandmaster. So we're not talking about an average player here. We're talking about a very strong player indeed. Um, um, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just surprised he got such a prospectless position with White after, after 15 moves. Well, I think it's the nature of the, the black game, you know. It's, it's not easy to play against the Slav. I mean, we're yeah. seeing this against even at the highest level, yeah. uh, a grandmaster level. And um, as, you, as you say, I mean, maybe he should take on G6, not, not play, not take on E5 at all, just, and, and just play something like this. Possibly. And then, I mean, I don't know how to judge this position. Uh, I guess I guess Black takes on e d4, doesn't he? I don't know. It's, it's difficult. Might to have, do. Yeah, you might have a few a few options here. Um, it it doesn't seem out of the question that he might play bishop d6. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not. It'd be nice to get the queen out to h4, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because He's just going to give him the. Uh, no, certainly not that. My mouse, my mouse slipped. That's my excuse. <laughs> yeah. Frequently, an internet bullet chess. <laughs> Bishop d6, queen takes b7. That looks extremely risky. Yeah. Now, uh, does well knight knight b6 seems possible. Uh, rook c8 looks very interesting just to protect the, the c6 pawn and stop the, the queen protecting the king. I quite like knight b6. I think that gives you, uh, gives you some freedom, doesn't it? Yeah, so bishop, bishop back and then... Uh, we don't want him to take on c6, do we, to let his queen back into the game? I know that I I think I prefer rook c8 to be honest. What beforehand? Before knight b6, yeah. Wow, because passive, look, passive looking move. I know, but but we 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 just shut the queen out of play, and now um, we've got he runs. Yeah, so now let's say we play knight e4, even. Well, you know, I was looking at knight takes g4. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's uh, that's interesting as well. And then Queen H4. Yeah. And White's got to be on his guard. So if he plays Bishop, Bishop he will take pawn. D1, we take the pawn. Yeah. With at least a draw, and maybe more. Yeah. I mean, if you've got to go F4 there, doesn't inspire confidence. So what's queen d1 instead of bishop e2? Queen d1. Okay, pawn takes pawn. Again, it looks like a draw at least. Yeah. I mean, maybe it is a draw. Try, right? rookie, try rookie one now. Try and now, run. That, that is... Uh... But... Uh... Well, with knight e5 coming too with a, with a tempo. So queen h2 check, king f1, 
95, for example. I like, well, if 95 straight away, that hits the pawn, doesn't it? But you want to give a check? Yeah, it does. It does. Well, we also had, we, well, maybe we had e4 even instead of uh, e takes d4. Yeah, that could be, that could be even better. Yeah. With the, Actually, the that, that seems to force it all, doesn't it? Um, well, I, I, well I, yeah. it certainly won't be worse. Uh, you know, you, you, the knight comes to f6 next, probably. So rookie one, do we do? Well, then rookie one, you go check, king. And now if I go here, this is an interesting move, isn't it? That, that, that probably forces a draw. Yeah, if we, if we want to draw, I want to if win. If you want to draw, yeah. Yeah. But well, it, okay, so it just gives you a, a flavour of the possibilities, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, maybe that, that's a far-fetched variation, but uh, it's certainly in the position. Yeah. Now, I mean, I could just imagine Sakaev at the board, you know, looking at the, all this stuff and getting quite worried because he's facing Gary Kasparov, you know, so sort of any sort of combinational mayhem around his king would not, not appear very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> but I think huh. taking this pawn, that allows black freedom of a different kind. Yeah, now the knight is in the attack. The knight is, uh, knight is about to play a big part in this game. Um. And and now we see the the weaknesses on White's queen side are starting to tell, you know, because he hasn't managed to get rid of that bishop on b4, and and knight c5 is becoming a, a very strong threat. Uh, this is the type of position as White you really don't want in the Slav because you know you've got weaknesses all over the place, and and whether White plays uh, rook d1 or not, Black can play knight c5, which is a very good move. Um. Well, we, I can understand why he wanted the queens off. Well, Black's threatening queen <laughs> h4 as well, isn't he? This is the problem, isn't it? If you retreat yeah. your queen, if you go somewhere like this, I, I think this is starting to look very nasty. So it, what's going on with my mouse this morning? Well, I don't know. No, it's, it's, uh, yeah. I don't like this very much. That looks I, like maybe you can defend it, but against Kasparov, I, I can't see it will be anything other than misery. Yeah. F5, yeah. something like that, or H, H5, I don't know. Yeah. Like looks, getting the action looks, going. Yeah. All right, so uh, Sakaev whipped off the Queens. But, of course, this leads him into a, a, a horribly passive position where, where Black is calling the shots. Yeah. It just shows you, you know, the power of, the power of that bishop on b4, the, the, the control of b4 is, is central in this variation. White must try and break it at all cost, or if he doesn't, you know, you get into a passive sort of situation like this. Yeah. Which, uh, I mean, uh, against Kasparov, I would say this is almost losing this position, wouldn't you? Uh, very, very. I mean, would you like to defend this? I... In a, in a way, I don't like the move A4, you know. I don't like giving that hole on B4. Oh, yeah, but we're talking about the main... You know, it, it, it's, um, uh, it, it just feels all wrong to me. You know, I don't know what you think about it. But, I mean, if that's White's main line... Well, the fact is, Black's threatening B5. So, White keeping the pawn. Yeah. So, you know, whatever you play more or less with white, black will play b5 if you don't play a4. You, you, you probably don't want to play knight c3 in that case. <laughs> <laughs> why, why start the game at all? <laughs> you know, he's going to play the slot. about e3? e3? 4e3? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So knight e5. And now we get this position where white's trying to hang on with opposite colour bishops, but uh, this is ugly. Man, this is ugly. Uh, well, what can you say? Uh, it's just a ghastly position. Yeah. <laughs> you can't take with a rook, otherwise b2 drops. And here, um, white can't play king g2. Yeah. Because of, because of knight e1 check. So, uh, King F1, and, and now it's kind of a curious state of paralysis that White's in. You know, Black's got the better pawn structure. I suppose Black, White, Black's King is just going to wander up to the queen side. 
and then he plays B5 yeah. and gets a pass pawn. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the C5 square beckons. Well, Rook C1 was played. And now, interesting move by Kasparov. He repositioned his knight. Well, there, was a, there, there were two threats, either to take H3 or to play Knight E4. Yeah, and of course, this way around, uh, White is praying that Black will take the rooks. Yeah. Because then there's a cute trap to fall into here. Excuse me, my mouse is playing tricks with me this morning. Yeah, I think you play F4 now, is that right? Yeah, and the, and the knight is trapped. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So um, what does he play? Of course, he doesn't do that. He plays knight E4, ramping up the pressure. And now I think something is dropping here. Yeah. Because uh, if he goes C4, we can just take that form with rook takes and then knight D2 check. And if you play king here, we play rook takes rook and now cheerfully take the pawn. Yeah. And that is game over. Because and it's game over. So, yeah. White never really managed to, uh, managed to get a foothold in this game. Which is really quite interesting, considering the strength of, of uh, the white player. Yeah. So what happened now? Let's have a look. Something not so long and entirely miserable. <laughs> the king just plods up to the centre. Black just puts all his pawns on black squares, making the bishop looking on rather forlornly. And now it's just a question of creating a pass pawn. Um, really the knight is a much more flexible piece than the bishop here oh dear yeah, suddenly he's got three pass pawns <laughs> I think Sakaya fought on bravely here didn't he a lot of us would be tempted to resign after knight takes a4 well he did resign after king d4 didn't he all right king That's d4 all I've got. resigns yeah well yeah and uh and, and well, he might. <laughs> okay, well, uh, you know, not a perfect game, but a good example, really, of, um, you know, the type of active play that actually Black can create in the Slav. And a uh, very good game by Kasparov, but not one Sakaev would want to remember. Yeah. Well, it, it, that has sparked a little bit of interest in me in the Slav defence. I'm very glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do, uh, I mean, what what I have planned against one d four is not incredibly respectable. You know, I'm not going to say what it is because you know that that might give the game away. But um, the, the Slav looks, um, yeah, it looks solid and a little bit lively. I'm still slightly bothered by the exchange variation because I, you know, I I, um, I quite yeah, like imbalance. Right up your street, Nigel. <laughs> symmetrical, <laughs> symmetrical position is deadly dull. You grind them down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, um, yeah, I've got to take a very quick break for one minute. So, can you just take the, the guys through the <laughs> yeah, opening? Yeah, I will. Uh, I, I will take you through the opening. Now, th this this opening here is a Fort Knox variation of the French defence. It, it's not something that personally I am crazy about, and the the the, the reason for that, Bishop D seven. Right, I, I usually advocate knight d7 in this position. Bishop d7 has got the idea to bring the bishop to c6, and then later on it gets exchanged. Now, the, the, the reason I'm not that fond of this line is that uh, when you get the little center, which, which we're going we're, we're to get shortly, pawn to c6, then the logical pawn levers for black would be either c5 or e5 but i would then worry that white has got the two bishops now this by the way was a game between naya and nakamura I'm not quite sure when it was played uh nakamura uh is quite adventurous in the opening he plays all kinds of things a uh, very uh, creative player um here we actually see him go for queenside castling very shortly Welcome. He actually played in um, uh, Philadelphia in two thousand and nine. Okay, so that was that was before Nakamura left for his career in streaming. 
<laughs> long before, long before. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think one of the reasons I show this game was not really to recommend the Fort Knox defence, but to illustrate how um, easy this pawn structure, this small centre pawn structure, can be created. Uh, it, it can be created from many different openings. We just see it in the French here, but it can come from the Caracan r routinely, yeah. can't it? Oh, yeah. Alicin defence, Scandinavian. Yeah. So there are a whole host of openings which you could play with black. I mean, I quite like the Caracan personally. Um because I think it offers more, most chances to play for a win. Um, but, um, yeah, the Fort Knox, is, it's an interesting choice, as you said, from Nakamura. Yeah. Now, uh, here White goes Queen E2, and he castles Queenside, which, again, I, I would say is just very adventurous, because it, it looks at first sight as if White is going to be able to, to build up a, an attack quite quickly with B4 and B5. Which, of course, he, he plays B4, doesn't he? Yeah, now he goes B4, G5, looking to create counterplay on the king side, and now white goes rook B3. Now, this is interesting because um, I'm pretty sure I've seen some Petrosian games where something like this happens, and, and the guy goes B5. Now, what would you say that the black should do here? Well, C5, uh, like, instantly. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's why he doesn't do it, I think. White doesn't do it. Because this is a very effective uh, a block, isn't it? Yeah. But the, 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 the question is, what do we do if white goes first C5 and then B5? Why, which might cause us more... You mean here? Uh, yeah. That does concede the D5 square. But then, yeah, so you play knight... D5. Also threatening knight C3 there. Yeah. I think that, that would be... Well, now what does he do now? He's got to defend it. Bishop D2 or something like that? Yeah, well, it explains why he played rook b3, because he wants to play c5. Yeah. And, uh, and then not have to worry about knight d5. I mean, I don't know. This, um, you know, black, black may have quite a few threats himself in this position, including g4. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's completely unclear, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, can white go pawn takes pawn, for instance? <laughs> well, yes. Then I have to go... You, you, you take with the queen and then he plays knight e5. Well, then all hell breaks loose, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I, I personally would worry about the situation of black's king. You know, if, yeah, I, yeah. if I have a little centre, I want to be castled in front of my big row of, of kingside pawns. Well, it Personally, probably then, means that then nibble should, away at the queen side. Black shouldn't play bishop g uh, seven, maybe. Um, I mean, knight f four is that a move? Yeah, possibly. I mean, white is going to take and and push on with b five, I suppose. You have to think that this is the reason that Nakamura played g five, isn't it? Um, but he didn't go c five. Yeah. Wonder why he, he does in a few moves. He he goes rook b three, and then and then when black goes g four, he he drops his knight back to d two, and then he pushes c five. Yeah, but don't you feel black's black's position is slightly better than the one we had before because his kingside attack is more advanced. Um, he's still got the d five square, <clears throat> and white's knight. White's Knight takes a couple of moves to get into the game. I mean, it's a very sharp position. I mean, Nakamura must have gone for this knowingly. Oh, yeah. Um, it's well, a yeah. bit surprising White didn't play C5 beforehand, like you said. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you're somebody that, that calculates as well as Nakamura, then, then you can afford to do this kind of brinkmanship and you get away with it because you, you can out-calculate your opponents. You know, I'm, I'm not sure all of us would be in the same position. I mean, maybe you, but I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have massive confidence in my, <laughs> in my ability to out-calculate everybody. Well, it's a question of feel as well. I mean, who's, whose attack is the stronger here? This is the question, really. Um, again, it's jolly difficult to, to actually tell. I, I wonder about Black's position when he met knight e4 with knight b8. Because that, that move looks like a, 
Uh, Huge concession. Well, it, it, it's so passive that I would wonder if everything is okay with Black's position, that he, that he felt obliged to play that. What do you think White should do now? Should he, should he do what he did or uh, go A4 or something and play it slowly? Or B5 even? Um, well, I, I'm not sure about taking the exchange. I mean, Bishop G5... It must have been tempting. Yeah. Take it must, it must have been tempting. But of course, that re re yeah, this reignites Black's winning chances once the, he wins the exchange. Because knight D6, you can't leave it there. Or yeah, you just go knight takes f7 and then you're dead. So you've got to take it off. Yeah, I mean, but but should white have plunged in with knight d6 straight away, or 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 should he play? Well, black will play knight f5 if you don't do that. True. D4 is hanging. Yeah, true. That's which. Yeah. Well, I mean, b5 springs to mind, doesn't it, in this position? Yeah. B5 must be a move. Yeah. B5. Get on with it. Yeah. Sometimes reputation counts for a lot in these types of positions. You know, you, you, you somehow get talked out of playing the, the right move through fear of the opponent or something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, B5, that looks obvious, doesn't it? Unless there's some trick with like F5, perfect. you know. Four is, takes he gonna play, is he going to play F5 on B5? But I would have... I'd probably take the pawn first. Then what do you do? If you take the queen, um, I could go knight c6. Well, I may not. I may not be recapturing. No. Okay, then. What do you do? I'm, I'm going to find some other beautiful move here. Uh, Bishop g5 now. <laughs> it's all good stuff. <laughs> That's what they say. What if I just play, uh, you know, like... Uh, D7. Yeah. Right. Can, can I now hoik my other rook over? Okay. I'm not saying I like this, but... Uh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is, it's an un completely unbalanced position, suitable for an open tournament. <laughs> Well, or, or knight, play for the win. Yeah, or knight f6. We don't know the context of this game, do we? Knight, rook h6. Oh, this, this doesn't look that great. Bishop e5. Bishop e5. Yeah, Black's, Black's position is crumbling into dust here. Bishop e5. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I would have played it to go. <coughs> yeah. I think there was good prizes in this Philadelphia tournament. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know the context of this game, which round this was played in, what they were, you know, what, what the stakes were. Yeah. Is it an insignificant game or were they playing for big money? But I, I mean, I do think that Nakamura's uh, incredible strength in complicated positions, you know, is probably an important backdrop to, to this kind of thing. Well, White takes its change. Yeah. Uh, and suddenly finds that this position is not easy to win. So well, after that, Back Far from that, play. Who who is who is better now? Yeah. So he you plays eight four, leave. and he does the amazing b five, which is a move that I might have struggled to come to terms with. <laughs> <laughs> but but with with all these knights hanging around Black's King, it's going to be very difficult to mate him. This should have been a guess the next move competition in the British Championship, uh, you know, with very uh, very nice prizes at stake. Because I, I don't think anybody would guess White's next move. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it was a good move, H four? Well, it, it wasn't for the first move on my radar. No, I would that have thought more about me than that. The yeah, move. I I would have been looking at Queen side moves personally. Like yeah. maybe it's yeah. I don't think it's just me, is it? You know, something to do with the queen side. But uh, well, I, I suppose he wants to slow up White's, uh, slow up Black's play on that central level. H four looks completely bizarre. Well, maybe he wants to play G three and Bishop E four and try and get a square for the bishop. 
Um, the oh, bishop, will, bishop will be quite nice on e4. Yeah. Of course, it gets hit with f5, doesn't it? Well, couldn't he just play g3 then and bishop e4? Well, I think he's probably worried about h4. I know, but the, the, the bishop on, e, uh, on e4 or g2 will cover h1. So you probably don't get mated at there. Wow, this is uh, certainly <coughs> certainly very difficult to say what's going on. Should we press on? Yeah, uh, I mean, of course, we're, we're, we're kind of hitting a wall here because, uh, yeah, H4. Well, you wouldn't normally think about that, but uh, he's trying to block the king side, maybe. So Nakamura puts his knight in on d5. He takes, okay, that's fair enough. Bishop comes to e4. And now black hops in. I mean, could he have prefaced that move with g3? Is black really going to take the pawn on b4? He probably is. Yeah. I mean, is there any reason not to? given that you're attacking the bishop as well, if he goes, can't play a move like queen e5. Well, you probably just play bishop e4 anyway and, you know, sort of just carry on. Okay, then you've got a pawn less. I know. So he's, he's got two pawns for the exchange. And... Uh, it's hard to get through. Difficult to, to, to see how we're going to mate him. Rook c1. Set up a cheap threat. Yeah, I don't know. The game continues. It's it's just uh, it's just super sharp, isn't it? I mean, I I don't know. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> You're asking me impossible questions. I need a bit more time on that one. <laughs> um, yeah. Bishop e4. Bishop e4. Knight f4. Yeah. Queen c2. Yeah. F5. Yeah. Bishop comes back. I, th I, I see that as uh, a bad sign for White, that he, he's got to remove his bishop from that diagonal again. Well, not only that, he's got to drop back to defend the king as well. Yeah. And now he gets the chance to bring his other knight into the game. Yeah. And, and further the attack on B4. Yeah. I mean, this is a really interesting game, isn't it, in many ways? Well, it, it, yeah, it, it's... Uh... Incredibly obscure. I mean, I, I, I have just got no idea what's been going on. You know, I, I, I wouldn't know how to assess this position. And possibly the players didn't know either, you know, but they were just playing uh, moves that they thought were okay. You know, and uh, safeguards is king. <laughs> <laughs> Before the... Uh, yeah, the, the storm breaks on the other board. side of the board. You know, I, I mean, it. I mean, you could imagine both players running short of time here. And, and of course, the initiative is very important in this type of position. Yeah. So now White's king looks weaker than Black's. I would so say. now White played rook back to e5. So if he takes the pawn on g3, what is wrong with that? <clears throat> Knight c3. Rook could take it, can't it? Oh, green takes d4 check. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Very nice. And then the queen. The queen. queen for square. E4 and d4, I don't think. No, I think that is the killer. Uh, yeah, that would be very hard to see. Yeah, well, I, I think the little tricks have been, uh, you know, lying under the surface for, for most of the game. And, you know, I, I would have lost on time already. <laughs> well, this is why he plays rook e5 um, to jam, try and jam the queen out of the game. Now rook f6, he takes on g3, and now rook f4, incredibly tricky player. Yeah. Well, I think White's struggling. I mean, I think that, you know, um, it's only one pawn for the exchange, but Black is so active. 
Yeah. And, and the bishop on f1 is so passive that, uh, plus the fact that black's got the safer king. Well, it's not that easy, but it's very difficult to play. Extremely yeah, difficult to play. Knight f6 wants to come to, to g4. And there we go, knight g4 now. So queen takes d4, check was rejected. Because he wants to be able to stop yeah. something from getting to e3. Yeah. And, and stop queen e3 after queen takes d4, check. And you can't play rook e4 because you lose your rook on g3. Yeah. So white's pieces are suddenly very clumsy, aren't they? Yeah. And now it's much easier. Uh, because I think you're coming out material ahead or you're going to do some nasty things to him. Yeah, yeah it's a nice queen move. Takes, rook takes h4 check. And the king takes, you take h4 anyway with the king horribly exposed. Well, he stopped mate anyway. Yeah. And now, well, there we go. Swapping down into a winning ending. Would you, would you fathom it? <laughs> and the king is well placed on B6 to support the pass ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Very, very yeah. flashy. Yeah. Here he comes. Look at that. Beautifully calculated. Oh, dear. It's quite an advantage to be able to calculate that well. Yeah. You know, and I, I, the, the tragedy is that it appears to be largely a God-given talent. Well, that, I mean, I don't forget that Nakamura was probably playing hundreds of games a day or, you know, uh, on the internet at that point, uh, honing his skills. Um, <laughs> well, we could play hundreds of games a day on the internet, but I'm not sure it would have quite... No, but we're old and knackered. That's a totally, <laughs> totally different view. That just show we don't have a life. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be old and knackered one day. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, I, another game which was quite fascinating all the way through. It gives you an idea of the possibilities inherent in these positions. But White did go for it, didn't he? Yeah. I, I still stand by what I said uh, during your brief intermission, that, that the, I, I'm not that fond of the Fort Knox because you, you really want to open the position with a pawn lever at some point. Uh, c5 or e5 uh, but you've given white the two bishops no in my defense i would say that i chose this game to illustrate the possibilities of the small center okay uh, which we you see weren't, here. weren't being attacked by the way <laughs> <laughs> which, as you as you quite rightly said can occur from many different openings yeah um and with that we move on to our third game yeah zvain rasmus vain against boris gratchev boris gratchev is actually one of my um my favourite models for students, because he, um, he's got a, an incredibly uh, economical opening repertoire. I mean, he, he, he's got like lots of dinky ideas, uh, but he's also end game orientated, you know, so, so he will grind on forever. You know, so he, he looks like thin and wiry, you know, you can imagine him, you know, sort of breezing through the, uh, the seven hour session and, you know, <laughs> being as fresh as a daisy at the end of it <laughs> well this was a game he played in 2021 and it was a, a speed chess game at chess.com but uh, that 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 uh, that aside it's meant to illustrate that you can play uh this type of solid chess slav like formation with black against flank openings um i mean i know nigel and i both played this type of thing with white for long periods during our chess career. <laughs> I, I've now stopped. <laughs> could you could you, you could you perhaps tell us the reason for that? Well the I, I think it's um uh it's linked to a little bit to getting older and uh, not wanting to have to calculate extensively on every move and instead be able to play a more sort of flowing game. Like where they, you know, because if you play, uh, if you play some kind of flank opening, then you've got ongoing tension, and then the that things only start to happen very often around move thirty or forty, right? And I, I think that is uh, a very exhausting way to play, not only if you're older, but also with the the rigors of modern tournament schedules, where you you 
you know, they want to condense as many rounds as possible into as short a space of time as possible just to finish off the older player. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I, I think that it, it just makes sense to have a game which kind of flows more and, and the moves are like easier to find intuitively rather than rack your brain on, on every single move. Well, it's true here that, uh, you know, um, white plays h3, black now basically keeps it as simple as possible. He takes the knight and creates a pawn structure which is harmonious with his remaining minor pieces. Yeah. Um, I know it looks as though he's playing drafts, but uh, there's a lot of sense to what black does here uh, <laughs> because he just wants to create a position which is easy to play. And I, I know what you mean, Nigel. You know, you can rack your brains because white's probably got a very small edge here, okay? But it's the type of edge that it's going to take a hell of a lot of energy and accuracy to actually increase and, in the end, uh, realise that yeah. is the, that is the issue. And black, um, black could narrowly castle kingside and show his queenside pawns forward. Well, what we've got here, I mean, this is a kind of like it's, it's like a sort of caro can position, isn't it? Yeah, like a two knights variation of the caro can, where you get this minute edge, and, and then you've got to do something with it. In practice, these positions are fairly easy to play with black, as we can see, and yeah. he even manages to achieve the freeing break to e5. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I, I think there's just a lot to be uh, said for this. And, and, and it's linked to this, uh, this question about whether you should play flank openings with white. I mean, flank openings, in a way, they're, they're, you, you, you think you're avoiding theory. And for that reason, you know, they're good for older players and, and whatever. But I think it's the ongoing tension you get in the games. You want to be able to play nice natural moves and not have to worry too much. And if it's a draw, then it's a draw, you know, but you, you, you don't want to be uh, sort of sweating away for hours on end trying to find some, you know, some ingenious tactic. Well, what's actually happened here is that Black has equalised almost effortlessly from the opening. I mean, I know this was a speed chess game. I can just imagine Black rattling out these moves. And... Um, what happens over the next few moves is just just shows that uh, you know Black's Black's position is absolutely fine uh, despite White's two bishops. Black's got lovely active knights in the middle, um, and now Knight D three, easy chess. Yeah, nothing difficult about it. And he even he even take uh, gets rid of that knight, which has moved so many times to, to take a bishop, which hasn't even moved, just to make his life easy. Yeah. So um, what is actually happening here is, is, um, is white better because he's attacking two black pawns or is it black perfectly okay? Well, queen b3 is a very risky move because he's letting that uh, black queen into e2. Well, and that's I, what happened. Yeah, and I can, I can say that because I've, I've seen the next few moves on the, uh, <laughs> on the score sheet. So uh, but. If you take on b7, you, you take the knight on, on, on c4. Yeah, Maybe yeah. queen b3 wasn't a good idea. Well, but it's tempting, isn't it? Especially the blitz game. Oh, I'm going to win a pawn. Yeah. You know, but maybe, um, maybe the move you actually want to play is queen c2. You've got to move your queen. Yeah, but that's not going to be... Uh... Or even queen f1. <laughs> you know, queen, queen f1 offers draw. <laughs> well, that's certainly a better move than... Uh than queen b3 now the question is what can i do about that i've got to defend a5 probably not much if i'm going to uh you know sort of just head for the draw <laughs> well i suppose i can go uh b6 you know you want to play b6 i don't want to play it but i, I i'm just wondering what i should play yeah I mean, I don't want to play Rook A8 either. It's, it's slightly annoying, Queen F1. Yeah, agreed. It's just tickling that A5 pawn. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah, okay, so Queen F1. So Queen, um, did, did he make a mistake? Well, Queen, I mean, this, this is a speed game, so, you know, we probably we shouldn't be too picky about it. Um, queen b3 
just looks like extremely risky because it lets the queen in. And then after queen e2, I would wonder. I mean, maybe I should just go bishop f1 and try to eject the queen. I should just go here or something like that, shouldn't I? Yeah, maybe. And just defend everything. Yeah. Anyway, on with the show. He played queen b3. In comes the queen. Knight takes a5. Knight and takes now... a5. Again, crazy risky. Why not bishop f1? Thunderbolt. Yeah. But, it, I mean, I, I would have thought that, that you, you, you should try. So here, after queen e2, can you just play this move? Try and get rid of the queen. Yes, you can. Then queen queen f three. I will I will persist. So well, you, uh, hang on a minute. Uh, can you even take on b seven now? Um, well, very possibly. Queen f three. Bishop f one. Queen f three. So maybe he's got to go back. Maybe, uh, but then you take a five. Well, it's a speed game. I mean, I, you know, I I, yeah, I yeah. think. <clears throat> We, we just have to accept I that. I mean, I think if we go back to this position. Um, black, black was certainly fine at this point, I would say. There's not much doubt that black is absolutely fine here. Yeah. And, it, you know, you, uh, knight d3, that makes perfect sense. Knight c4, uh, knight takes c1, rook takes c1. Yeah, knight f6, that's it. Yeah, or, or some other move. I mean, you... You know, maybe you could also... A um, well, knight c7 is also a move. Yeah, or, or maybe you go queen d8. Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> yeah, and just, you know... Probably end in a draw. Yeah, queen d8, and then, and then also, also maybe bishop f8. No, no, we've got to watch that knight. Oh, well, okay. White's probably slightly better here. Because of that pawn on a5. Um, whether whether black could improve uh, e5 takes. Uh, yeah, knight takes. Yeah, knight takes is good. Bishop here. Um, knight d3 looks fine. Takes, takes. Knight c4. Um, well, okay, takes, takes. Probably just need a good move here. But it, it looks, what's wrong with Queen D eight? Probably not a lot, but but White can continue then with with Queen D three or Queen B three, Queen B three. Yeah, it's a bit of a grind. Intending, intending Rook D one. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know it, it looks like a, a little bit of a nibble um i don't know where where black should have played it differently i mean but but it, you know they're, they're playing really fast here you know this is a this is a speed game and uh it all looks so plausible yeah So well, you, I mean, can I go queen e1 here? Well, you can, but I imagine you'll be a bit worse. With the you know, idea, if you go... Same, just for the same reasons that um, white's got... Right, so now... Uh, Bishop e4, knight f6. B4, knight f6. Right, bishop e4, knight f6, bishop h1. And then I go there. And bishop e3. And you're a bit better again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're spending uh, we're spending quite a while analysing this position. <laughs> in the game itself. They had no time at all, did they? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, they're, they're blitzing out moves here, and you know, and and the the clock was probably a bigger factor than anything. Uh, knight takes a5, knight e3 is a, is a nice tactic. Very nice. 
and then bishop f1 queen d2 and suddenly black's got a, a humongous initiative this is nice yeah right so queen b6 there's some interference move is there there uh bishop d4 queen takes rook oh queen takes rook Check. i was wondering about that ah right okay is that any good i don't know well, I'm praying it is because I'm chucking away a rookie if it's not. <laughs> well, can you go c5 instead? Right, c5, queen takes, and then bishop d4. This looks um, slightly less generous. Yeah, well, don't, don't want to be too generous. <laughs> bishop d4. Good. It. I need a new mouse back. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to affect your uh, blitz right. Takes. Yeah, takes. Yeah. Queen takes f2 check. Oh dear. Uh, king there, uh, queen takes f1 check. And and then some some good knight move somewhere. What you mean like knight e3? Yeah. Keep defending like Joseph Blackburn. <laughs> <laughs> and well, uh, I, mean, I can win this page with <laughs> queen f3 and knight f1. That will that do? Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or even queen. Can we do queen f3 and... No, 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 no. But yeah, okay, just win the exchange and, you yeah. know. All very vulgar. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, where are we? Rook. So he goes rook takes d1. Well, it's a, it's a blitz game, isn't it? Uh, so queen... Yeah, yeah, rook takes d1, queen takes, knight takes b7. Rook d2, knight takes c5, and now he attacks f2. Also defends the e4 square, so, so white can't defend with knight e4. And when white goes knight b3, he schlops off that pawn on b2. And then a5, queen d1, attacks the knight. <laughs> desperate, desperate stuff here. Queen c7. The flags are hanging. Steinitz would have liked it. <laughs> Rook back here. Check. Bishop back. Queen here. And then Rook a1, getting his Rook behind the pass pawns. It's, it's good to know that even amongst all this chaos, the, the principles still stand. I tell you what, writing a chess book these days is becoming a nightmare because when you use the, the databases, you know, you, they're absolutely infested with <laughs> Well, when I, whenever I search for something, the, the, the first thing that always comes up are uh, title oh, Tuesday games. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you get this, this huge list of title Tuesday games. Then you're looking down the list and finally you find something played in South America. Right. And think, oh, a real game. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It really is becoming difficult to weed out all this. Uh, the, 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 yeah, the, yeah. The absolute crap. Yeah, I mean, there was a time uh, that, uh, that uh, they actually had, you know, well, I, I quite like the chess informant quality base. Right. That's, uh, that's got good stuff in it. It does need a, a, a new degree of quality control, these databases. Yeah, yeah. Because they're yeah. now getting really uh, polluted beyond belief. Yeah. All these blitz games. A, a lot of the games have got, uh, they're, they're not entered correctly. No. There are misprints, there are incorrectly, uh, there are games which are only half, half the game or something. Yeah, even, uh, even real classic games. There's, um, uh, you know, you can have like a really famous game and, and somebody's botched the moves. Yeah. Like, it, it, you know. They're all in too much of a hurry to, you know, um, to make the database that they're producing the biggest one or something or some sort yeah. of selling point. But if it's full of crap, then what use is it? Well, who can who can play through twelve million games anyway? You know, why do you need a big database? You know, That's what it's going to take to beat Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to go through the rest of this? And game? possibly twelve million more. All the formality here. Uh, <laughs> well, what, Black is a rook up, and he's blockaded the pawns. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm writing this this book on the Barry attack, and it, it, it is becoming very difficult to, to weed out because most of these bits games have interesting moments. I mean, this game had quite a few interesting moments, yeah. but then you, you reach a stage in the game where the rest of the moves are superfluous. Yeah. And, and in a book, it looks a bit odd to just cut the game there. 
and say <laughs> the rest of the moves are trash. <laughs> so I'm not included. <laughs> well, couldn't you just put like one zero brackets time? And just uh, actually, the, per, the 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 company I'm writing for don't like that anymore. Oh right, okay. They prefer to finish their uh, game extracts with words or something like that. Right, okay. And they don't like yeah. I give up uh, as as. as <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the way to finish the sentence. So I suppose dot 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 what uh, brackets one zero is completely out of. No, point. that's out of the question. You forget oh, that. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, there we go. Anyway, so it's an mm. impassioned plea towards all the database creators: please stop including these bloody blitz games. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with classical games. <laughs> or with somebody. Yeah. I mean, what what we could really do with is um, uh, there, there used to be there, there used to be a, a a database just of good games. And I, I thought that was a really good idea. And a, a database of good games and, uh, well, I, I do like uh, the, the, the quality base. Uh, Megabase is, uh, is pretty good as well because you get, you know, you get annotations there. But well, you, you also get, get the option of top, top game in, in the mega database. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, so, nevertheless. There's an awful lot of Blitz games in the Mega Database. I oh, know. It's just, uh, yeah. It's, uh, anyway, let, let's, let's finish this game off because uh, it's about time that White resigned, but he's playing on, perhaps hoping for a heart attack. And uh, I don't think he's going to come. Oh. You know, well, I think that, that pass porn is pretty well blockaded. He's playing on, you know, it, it's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I guess he was, you know, the black was short of time or something. I don't know what the... Uh, Can't be that short of time when you're getting an increment all the time. Yeah, well, if he's got an increment, then it's Look like... Look at that. A7. Yeah. That's the type uh, of move some uh, guy plays online when you're down to your last few seconds and you can't see him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then, yeah. Can all, always hope for a disconnect as well. Curiously, no, um, the other. curiously, White managed to resign. Yeah. Weird, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i mean I, I, yeah uh i i think the point that you made with your selection is an extremely good one you know um and it and it's something that we we both done with with students i know you know the the you, you could do with playing something uh solid where you understand the pawn structure much more than these you know critical theoretical lines and then trying to trying to put the engine on just before the game. I, I think that's a crazy way to go. Well, I think one thing that we, we also learn is that although the games we showed this morning, that they have been quite sharp um, yeah. in many parts. You can limit the amount of sharpness you, you, you uh, encounter by choosing the right openings. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know we've seen some sharpness here, but that means you're playing for the win with black. It's not just a solid sort of setup where you're just holding the other guy off. You can play for the win with these systems. And the Slav setup, or the Karakan setup, or the French setup, however you want to put it, is is a pretty good way of doing it. Yeah, and it, and if there is sharpness, then often it's delayed until you're out of range of uh, pre-game research. You know, which I think has got tremendous practical benefits that you don't have to then spend a lot of time, you know, with your you know with your engine chuntering it, its way through different variations. I mean, this is a very good method to adopt if you have no coach; you're just teaching yourself which is something our generation did. I mean, I, the modern trend is towards coaching. Yeah. Um, and a good coach could, could also help you, guide you towards making the most economical and correct decisions when you're trying to do this with your openings. But if yeah. you don't need a coach, you know, you can do it yourself. And this is one way to do it, um, to shorten the amount of time you have to spend on, on learning chess openings, which is unfortunately a necessity in this day and age. Indeed. So that is it for today and uh we hope you enjoyed the show um we're, we're still trying to um rustle up some some new guests um we've got lots of invites out there um some chess players are surprisingly shy to go out today they're surprisingly shy about appearing but um i can't think why we treat well, them very maybe, gently maybe they, maybe they just don't want to be seen with us <laughs> possibly it, that, that's a distinct possibility <laughs> with that cheery thought we bid you good day yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Cheerio. Bye.